Double murder leaves Rocky Point tense. The fishing village of Rocky Point in Clarendon is tense following the murder of two men in the community yesterday. Two other men were also injured in the attack. The deceased men have been identified as 19-year-old Timar All, also known as Pele, and 32-year-old Jermaine Davis, also called Naga, both fishermen of Rocky Point. Reports are that about 12.30 p.m. All and Davis were among a group of men sitting under a shed along K Lane in the community when three men emerged from a Toyota Mojo car and fired at them. Davis died on the spot while All died while undergoing treatment. The police theorize that the attack stems from an ongoing feud and is a reprisal attack for a murder of another man last year. The St. Thomas Police have launched an investigation after human skeletal remains were found in an abandoned building that was being demolished by parish authorities on Sunday morning. The Gleaner was informed that one set of remains was found in a coffin inside a building and two other skulls were found elsewhere in the dilapidated structure, which is located across from the Morant Bay Police Station. The structure is said to have been once served as a lodge building. The remains were discovered sometimes after 9 o'clock. The demolition exercise, which was being carried out by a team of the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation as a part of a drive to knock down the old structure in the parish capital, had to be halted to allow the police to investigate. A source told Gleaner that it had been listed for demolition by the local council under the Dangerous Structure Act. We serve a notice on the building for it to be demolished. There were no occupants and the owner of the building couldn't be located so we put a notice just to notify the building that is going to be wrecked. The person said adding that in the past vendors allegedly used sections of the structure but were ordered to remove their belongings. The source also informed our news team that the space is sometimes occupied by a man believed to be of unsound mind. Man killed in Mandeville mob attack days before a wedding. Victoria Town, Manchester residents here are still in disbelief and shock that a man whom they describe as a well respected citizen and dedicated community member was killed in a mob attack in Mandeville days before his wedding. Shefton Campbell, 62, died from injuries he sustained after he was beaten by a crowd of people on Lower Manchester Road mid afternoon on Friday. He is a decent citizen. He's just buried his mother a month ago. It is also sad to how they beat and killed him, said Victoria Town resident Audrey Pinot Goss. His death sparked protests in southern Manchester on Saturday as residents used debris and down trees to block sections of the main road in their community. Residents said the father of three had just left his common law wife in a nail salon when the mob attack started. A man who identified himself as Patrick, otherwise called Chicky, said the residents want justice. The lady, common law wife, just fled down to get married. She was across the road doing her nails. The man parked him van across the road to get some stuff. He had a lot of cash on him, and they beat him and took away the cash. So I want to know about all the cameras in Mandeville, he said. A video which went viral on social media shows Campbell lying on a sidewalk surrounded by a crowd urging robbery accusation. They didn't show us when all citizens were beating the man, so we want the police to locate all cameras in Mandeville in their investigations to find the real culprit, said Patrick. He said the police took Campbell to the Mandeville Regional Hospital where he died while undergoing treatment. He made an appeal for anyone with information that can assist in the investigation to contact the police. Councillor Claudia Morant Baker, Porous Division Jamaica Labour Party, said she knew Campbell very well. He was committed to his community. When you hear the people venting, they have to vent because Victoria Town has lost a legend, a good and humble person, she said. She said hospital staff did everything they could to save his life. When I spoke to people at the hospital and they told me they did everything possible to try to rescue him, I cried. It hurts to know that a father, friend and brother is gone because of misunderstanding, she said. She is appealing to citizens to refrain from mob attacks. Bojo and Curry Bard from entering Rio Grande Valley the Gleaner has been informed that international reggae artist Bujo Bantan was a short while ago barred from entering the Upper Rio Grande Valley, where the Morton Maroons are expected to hold an election today. Our news team understands that the entertainer was stopped and questioned at a security checkpoint in fellowship by members of the security forces who then refused him entry. 
The commanding officer for the Portland Police Division Superintendent Kenneth Chin has confirmed that the artist was stopped at a checkpoint. He was, however, unable to provide additional information about what transpired between the reggae artist and the lawmen. He told the Gleaner online that he would try to get more details on the situation. However, a police source told our news team that Bantan, whose real name is Mark Myrie, was stopped along with an Antara traveling in a bus. He was questioned about his presence in the area and then refused entry to the upper Rio Grande Valley by the police military team, which also ordered him to turn back. The Gleaner was also informed that a similar warning was issued to Chief of the Akongpong Maroons in St. Elizabeth Richard Curry earlier today after he was reportedly intercepted at an undisclosed location by members of the police military team. Anxiety is growing in Morton, which is located in Upper Rio Grande Valley in eastern Portland. An 18 year old member of the community, Lomora Dillian, is seeking to unseat Colonel Wallace Sterling for leadership of the Morton Maroons. Sterling has led the Morton in that section of Portland for some 30 years. However, the Morton Maroon Council has reportedly not sanctioned an election, leaving the Maroons to wonder whether the election will be held.